I bring that up because, you know, obviously we set the, the practice to, um, you know, do a number of things. We wanted our guys to compete today, so we had competitive drills as well as, um, you know, we wanted to get a scrimmage to, to again, uh, evaluate players that are going to have to step up and play for us. So, uh, you know, you saw a lot of guys that are going to have to play, maybe not frontline roles, but, uh, you know, key backup roles for us today. So uh, the practice was, uh, again, for us, you know, Friday, Saturday is a lot. And we had a heavy practice day yesterday. We came back again today. And guys, look, nobody loves spring ball. <laughs> you know, players don't love spring ball. The coaches love it to, to coach. But what I was most pleased with is in back-to-back -back days in the spring, um, you know, we got guys like Tyler Eifert and uh, Nick Martin and Manti Tail and veterans out there competing not moping, out there competing their butts off. And to me, that's the mark uh, of putting together um, a very cohesive group. So again, the way I look at things as a head football coach, uh, you go back to back days in the spring and you have a lively practice like we had today, I'm a pretty happy guy. So with that, I'll open up the questions. Brian, with one week left, are there some people that are emerging that maybe you didn't see at the beginning of the spring, maybe you were bossing and people like that? Yeah, I thought he showed up today, but, you know, I think, Eric, what we're trying to do is give those guys a lot of reps. Cam McDaniel got a ton of work today. Um, you know, again, as we, as we continue to move our tight ends, all of our tight ends are getting a lot of work. So I don't know if there's one guy in particular as much as we're making sure, like today, that, that we get a chance to see guys that are going to have to play maybe some key backup roles as well. And, and that was really the, uh, the test for us today. And we'll watch the film and find out. I'll probably know a little bit more, you know, going into Monday uh, as to any guys that may be emerging. Coach, how did you feel your defensive line has kind of stepped up uh, with Aaron God now and guys moving into to bigger positions? You know, it's really seamless in that sense because, you know, you're, you're talking about, you know, Capron, Lewis Moore, who, you know, is a star. You know, it's just, it, it's, um, it's seamless. And, uh, you know, Lewis Nix is, is providing the consistency um, that he didn't provide earlier in the spring. He, he had back-to-back -back, uh, really good practices, the way Lewis can play. And uh, so I was happy to see that. So when you talk about the defensive line, if you got Lewis Moore, I mean, that's a great transition to him. And then Lewis Nix picking up his game. You don't see a change at all in our defensive line. That's, you know, you hate to lose a good player, uh, but when you have some pretty good depth there, uh, you really don't notice it. When you have a situation like you did in the last couple of days with Aaron, where do you stop being a coach and start being almost a social worker, almost a psychologist? How do you blend those two? Well, Al, I think you're doing it every day. You know, I think in some fashion, I think coaching is, you have to be able to, to talk to kids and find out what, what those buttons are that, that are going to get them to, to open up and talk about what their issues are. So, you know, I, I try to find myself doing a lot of that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just some days you need it a little bit more. Um, but, you know, they're 18 to 21 year olds and, and they're gonna have, good days and bad days. So I think I'm constantly trying to be in touch with it. I know our coaches try uh, really hard, but that social worker, that psychologist, uh, I think that all goes into being a good uh, coach and a good teacher. Brian, have you added the layer of checks with your quarterbacks yet? And with, again, week left in the spring, do you see this yeah. really all moving into August? Yeah, we, we've moved to our checking, uh, which is a new system for us because uh, we want to be able to provide our quarterbacks uh, not only the protection but but the routes necessary if teams want to bring pressure against us that, that we can really hurt them. We don't want to be um, in a position where we have to throw hot and you know you, you dump it out there so we wanted to be patient. To answer your question without getting too much coach speak in it we're, we're laying that level down now and today was the first day that they got an opportunity to check plays. And did that change the way you see? Oh, sure. Okay. Well, it's like anything else. I mean, if you're confident and you walk up there and you know what you want to do and you're making the check, you're commanding your presence, uh, that obviously goes a long way to the unit. So that was the thing that we wanted to see today. Who, who, who commands that respect? Who goes up there? And, and as I told them, even if you're wrong, 
Even if you're wrong, go up there with a certainty that you know what you're doing. What's the status with Goodman, Nicholas, uh, Goodman, uh, ankle sprain. Uh, you know, we put him in a boot. I think if we needed to play, he could have played today. But he's been great all spring. We're going to make sure he's right so we can get him in the spring game. Uh, Nicholas, uh, it just uh, he, he had, uh, I don't know what the exact medical term for it is, um, like a GI flu or like intestinal flu. Uh, he hasn't felt so good. So, um, but he'll be back. Nicholas, who else do you have? Massa, Massa's got a, uh, an ACL injury, uh, and it looks like uh, it's going to require surgery. He might, well, yeah, five months, you know. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're certain that it's an ACL, whether it's a surgical repair. I think Brian Radigan's in there now doing another evaluation. The right side of the line there offensively, and Lombard, is he pretty much entrenched? Is it more of a right guard situation? I think, well, you know, we're de you know, we're going back and forth on that. You know, you got Nick, you got Mike Golick, and you got Christian Lombard. I think I said that. You got three for two there. Um, and how that plays out. What do you have with Golik? You've got some experience. A little, little stronger physically, maybe not as athletic as Nick Martin. Christian gives you a little bit of both. I'd say right now that you know, you, you're probably looking at Lombard at right tackle, Martin and Golik fighting it out for right guard right now. Uh, but it could change. And with uh, Goodman out, is there anyone on the receiving core? We're trying to get to Ferris to, you know, you know, move his game up. You know, he's he's uh, he's a, he's a good talent. He doesn't know how to practice yet. He's learning. Um, he's just got to learn how to play the game. You know, and and the way we play the game here is that uh, you you got to go through the echo of the whistle. But he'll learn. He wants to be a good player, and, and I'm sure uh, his dad wants him to be a good player too. I wouldn't want to get Phil Daniels mad. So um, I, I think he's going to get it. It's just you know, it's it's taking a little time. How has Connor responded from the tragedy earlier this week? Uh, he's, you know, he went, you know, he went home obviously to be with his family and and um, to be there and came back locked in as as usual. You know, he's he's great in the classroom. He's great on the field. He's got a great temperament and demeanor. He's always. Uh, I just like the fact that he's very very coachable. And uh, we, we had a play out there today, and and this is why you love to coach kids like this and he froze he, he forgot what the play was and so consequently he threw it into traffic and almost made it into a situation where Ben Coy you know lost his life you know and 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 so he, he comes up and he goes I just I just blew it I blew it I blanked I can't believe it I go well next time you blank let's try doing something else like running outside and throwing the ball away. He goes, that's a great idea. <laughs> so it's fun to coach a kid like that. He, he can engage and have that conversation with you. And he's, he's, uh, he's somebody that's, that's going to pick it up pretty quickly. And just to follow up on injuries quickly, George Atkinson walked off. Yeah, he, uh, I think he just felt the effects of some hard hitting. Shembo, I know you, I think you said last week. He had a surgery. He had surgery on it. Uh, they had to repair it. Um, so he's in a he's in a cast right now. He's probably I think his prognosis is six weeks. You know, bone the bone uh, had to be they had to put a screw in there. So I think uh, generally speaking, when you get into the bone, it's a six week procedure. And then Bennett Jackson, did he get dinged up? Shoulder. You know, he has that. He's got that labrum uh, that's that's been there. We're not going to do anything with it. He's just you know, it's one of those things where. Uh, He'll put a shoulder harness on. At the beginning of spring, well, Chuck Martin said he wanted Tommy's mentality to be like, this is my job, you have to come get me. Sure. As he practiced that way? That Not at the start because, you, you know, we, we, we didn't give him the opportunity to do that because we really started all over again, Pete, in a sense. So, but as, as we go longer into this, our expectations are, listen, you've got more experience than anybody else here. Go out and act like that. And uh, I think he did today. You know, he's still... Uh, you know, he still has some work to do once, once the, the, and you know this from last year, once he gets into a little bit of trouble, trouble starts for us. And 
They brought some pressure. He didn't see it. He threw the ball into the wrong side of coverage. So I think the thing that we need to get with Tom is he's confident in himself, but we've got to make sure that he's making good decisions under duress. And that's, that's the next step for him. And with Everett, yes. the attention to detail, everything, not just in practice, meeting all that stuff, how is he grown up or is he still growing up? Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think I've used this before. You know, when, when Everett got here, it was the unconscious incompetence. He didn't know that he didn't know. And then he's grown to a conscious competence, but it's so hard for him every day to be, you know, to be that guy. But he's trying so hard, he wants to do it. He will do it, he will do it. We just wish it was sooner, but it's gonna come. Um, he had a good day today. And, and it's almost like we're taking one day at a time with Eric. He was on time, he was wide-eyed, he was engaging, and, and he was learning on the field. And I love him, I just wanna string those days together with him. Brian, are you going to be live with the quarterbacks in the blue gold game, and have you been live a lot with them this spring? Every time we've scrimmaged, they've been live. Yeah. We ran Tommy today because we feel like he can run the ball. He picked up eight yards on a designed run. He's got to be able to run the ball and have some effectiveness for us, and we showed him that he can do that. I think he was so unconfident. He didn't have any confidence in his ability to run the ball. Um, so we're going we're gonna to keep the live jerseys on those guys in the spring game, too. And then Kim Roberson, a year after that terrible knee injury, what are you seeing from him? This he's, he's working as hard as he can. It's been slow, slow progress. It was, a, it was uh, as, as difficult of an injury as that you're going to get. I mean, it was, it's been a slow go for him. I, I, we feel so bad for the young man because he loves Notre Dame. He loves football. It's, it's just been a hard road for him. Right off the first week, Coach Elston mentioned Cole Schwenke is one of the most improved players. I mean, do you see where he's somebody who can be like a shot or not, just have yeah. an equal split? I think, I think that's probably a good assessment in terms of the role that we'll expect of him. Right now he's the starter, um, and, and I think we all know about that situation in terms of uh, what he can do and Lewis. You know, so we feel really good at that position. Here's what happened. You know, Kona had to grow into his body. You know, he came here at 220 pounds. You know, now he's 294 pounds. He's, you know, he's a big young man and it took time to grow into his body. Now he's, he's leaned down a little bit, he's handling himself, and physically he's a strong kid. So you're just seeing the, the maturity. The, the shame of it is he played as a true freshman. We had to play him as a true freshman. You know, he really should be a guy with, you know, three years of eligibility left. So um, he's really come on from, from that physical standpoint. And I think he'll be, you know, similar to a, a Sean Sonar, if not better. Right. Right. How are you feeling at cornerback opposite Bennett with Josh and Lowe? How are they? They're, they're competing. Um, you know, I think both of them are going to play. Uh, both of them, you know, certainly uh, are going to get an opportunity to, to show themselves in the screen, <coughs> you know, quite quite a bit because of our depth numbers there. Uh, but that's all we got on campus, you know. So both those guys are going to play. I think they both have different skill sets. Uh, Josh has got great speed. Lowe is a, is a pretty uh, technique-oriented uh, player, you know. So if you could get Lowe's technique on Josh and put some speed on Lowe, you'd, you'd have the right guy there. One or two more. So a lot of Daniel today, you mentioned at the start. Yeah. To see somebody be on the field this fall? Yeah, we made a decision that, that he had to get more reps. And, and he had to get some. He's a tough physical player. If you watched our hard hat drill, he's a guy that can run and hit and tackle as well. And he's a pretty athletic kid. So he got a lot of film today. So we'll get some good evaluations. I was in, in Chicago yesterday. One of the reports was that you said eight wins to shoot for this year. Is that accurate? No, that's not accurate. What I said was that uh, Notre Dame had not strung together three years in a row of eight wins or more. So if we win eight games next year or more, it'll be the first time in 16 years. Thank you for getting that accurate. Yes. Yeah, we, you shoot for eight wins around here, you won't be around here very long. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Trust me. My boss is up there. He already told me that. <laughs> There's no eight win seasons around here. Now, we can build towards that. You know, and that's that's part of what we're doing is, you know, the building blocks and putting together our football program. We want consistency. The point of that whole statement was 
you need consistency, you need stability. And consistency is you, you can't have a 10 win season and then a three win season. You know, you, you, you gotta build consistency and that's, you know, that's what we're, we're all shooting for. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thanks.